the Atlantic 10 Conference Championship. Did you ever see a hungry man eat or watch a thirsty man drink? That's what it's all about here tonight. Penn State has not been to the NCAA since 1965. Rutgers not since 1983. They are here. They are hungry. And we have major excitement on tap here at the rack tonight. Hello, everybody. I'm Fred White, our analyst, Clark Kellogg. And Clark, what do they call this March Madness anyway? Well, I don't think words could do justice to the pictures you've just seen. The emotion, the enthusiasm, the excitement here epitomizes March Madness. I'm sure a lot of fans around the country are wondering what Rutgers and Penn State they did to get here. They did not surprise you. I know that. No, they did not, Fred. These teams both deserve to be here. Penn State likes to pound it inside and do their damage on in the paint, while Rutgers will press and try to do it from the perimeter with three-point shooting. The simple fact of the matter is, down the stretch in the Atlantic 10 Conference race and through the tournament, these two teams were playing the best basketball in the conference. Mark, let's talk about keys to the game for these teams here tonight. Well, for Penn State, they really want to throw the ball inside, Fred, but just as important, I think, is the fact that they're going to have to shoot it well from the perimeter. Freddie Barnes and Monroe Brown, that'll fall in their responsibility. What about for Rutgers? Well, for Rutgers, they're going to need to deny the ball inside, deny the post. Emory Ward's going to have to be a warrior inside. A word about the excitement here at Rutgers. When the team got back from Philadelphia the other morning, the crowd was already lined up at 2 a.m. They have closed circuit feeds at the Livingston Center and the barn here tonight. Hello to those people watching across campus, hello across the country. We'll be back with the starting lineups. Play the seven up final match game. All the excitement of college basketball. Every five seconds, someone bottle cap can instantly score free seven up for the chance to win ten thousand dollars. If they match that final championship winning score, hurry and take your shot. There's a reason why wherever he goes, Buzz McKenzie has so much fun. He's always in control. Buzz knows it's cool to live by one simple rule. Be a good sport. Know when to say when. A reminder from Anheuser-Busch. We'd like to award you the account, but frankly, there's a problem. What's that? You agreed to keep this assignment confidential. Obviously, you brought in freelance artists, typesetters. Hold on, hold on. All the work we've shown you was done by the people in this room on a computer. What computer puts out work like this? Hire us and we'll tell you. You know, it was great growing up on our ranch in Oklahoma. And now when I walk into a New York City restaurant and order up a little bitty Kansas City strip, makes me feel right at home. I've got a taste for some real food. The Diet Colas are at it again, taking pot shots at each other in their commercials. Well, in the interest of good taste, Diet 7-Up will not condone this sort of violence on television. Lighten up, Diet 7-Up. It's time to play ball. Unbelievable play. Sunday night's ESPN puts you in a box seat for live college baseball featuring the nation's top teams and heaviest hitters. Two top-ranked teams battle head-to-head -head as the LSU Tigers take on their SEC rivals, the Florida Gators. It's Sunday night college baseball at 9 Eastern, live on ESPN. ESPN's NCAA Basketball, the Atlantic 10 Conference Championship Game, is brought to you by Mitsubishi, bringing you the new Eclipse Sports Coupe. See it at your Mitsubishi Motors dealer. By the Principal Financial Group, financial products that give you an edge. And by Apple Computer, maker of Macintosh Personal Computers, giving you the power to be your best. To the middle of the left and to the right to the left of the center of the screen, you can see maybe a river of blue and a sea of red here at the Lewis Brown Athletic Center. They call it the Rack. It used to be known as the Rutgers Athletic Center, and I will tell you now, it is electric in here tonight. We're set to meet the starting lineup. Let's join public address announcer Jim Wilson. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the championship game of the Pepsi Atlantic 10 Conference Basketball Tournament featuring the Penn State Nittany Lions and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. And now, tonight's starting lineup. At forward for Penn State, a 6'8 senior from Widefield, Colorado, number 43, Tom Hovan. At forward for Rutgers, 
a 6'6 senior from Jersey City, New Jersey, number 12, Emery Moore. At the other forward for Penn State, a 6'6 senior from Eastern Maryland, number 31, Bruce Blake. At the other forward for Rutgers, a 6'5 sophomore from Trenton, New Jersey, Number 35, Tom Savage. At center for Penn State, a 6'9 junior from Hatboro, Pennsylvania. Number 40, Ed Fogo. At center for Rutgers, a 6'6 junior from Washington, D.C. Number 24, Anthony Duckett. guard for Penn State, a 6'3 freshman from Aberdeen, Maryland, number 15, Monroe Brown. At guard for Rutgers, a 6'3 sophomore from Brooklyn, New York, number 23, Craig Carter. At the other guard for Penn State, a 6'0 freshman from Greensboro, North Carolina, number 21, Freddie Barnes. At the other guard for Rutgers, a 6'2 junior from Elmwood Park, New Jersey, number 13, Rick Danica. The head coach of the Penn State Nittany Lions, Bruce Parkhill. And the head coach of the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, Bob Lenzo. The starters are set. Penn State and Rutgers set to battle for the Atlantic 10 Conference Championship and the automatic bid to the NCAA Tournament. We'll be back with tip-off. Rico Premium Copiers, built to work, built to last, and sold by American Office Equipment, your authorized Rico dealer. Avery! My new. This is no problem, Mr. Bigsley. <laughs> Good. What time is it now? Oh, it's this is not a problem, Mr. Bigsley. American office equipment, I've got a problem. American office equipment for professional sales and service, call 1-800-TEAM-AOE for that attention to detail that keeps problems from coming back. This is not the headlight of a 57 Chevy. It's a five-carat, $45,000 diamond, and it's yours if we can't beat their deal this week on any new Chevrolet. We'll beat their deal on any new Mitsubishi, including Gallant, the import car of the year. Remember, we'll beat their deal or you get this $45,000 diamond ring. You, you got the power at the check-in. The officials for tonight's game, Art McDonald, George Watts, and Murph Shapiro. On hand here tonight, yes, Murph Shapiro, the man that made the call that turned out to be somewhat controversial in the semifinal game in the win over Temple. There's been a lot of talk about that call, and Lou Bonder, the supervisor of officials, explained it very well that Mark Macon stepped in the lane to call timeout, clearly a violation. They feel it's a good call, and on we go. Game knows tonight. Penn State in the semifinals beat West Virginia by 22. They won the last meeting with Rutgers up at Penn State, 93-65. Rutgers beat Temple in overtime at the semifinal round at the Palestra in Philadelphia. They beat Penn State here at home in overtime earlier this year, 87-83. That's Bob Wenzel on a stick. What do they call him, Bob Sickles? Bob Sickles or Wynn Sickles, whatever your, <laughs> whatever your preference, Brad. His first year here as the head coach of his alma mater, and he has turned into a cult figure here. Rutgers has come from 7-22 last year to 17-12 this year. And on the verge of going to the NCAA, and Bruce Parkhill should be no less at Penn State. He's brought his club to 19 and 10 to this championship game tonight, and they're really playing well. Pass inside, knocked away by Duckett. Penn State with the basketball. Freddie Barnes had it knocked away. It was intended for Fogel. They're trying to pound in the paint already, Clark. They really look to throw it inside. Right now, Rutgers in a 2-3 matchup zone defense trying to prevent the passing lanes into the paint area. Tom Hovass, the outstanding senior, had it knocked loose. Bruce Blake takes it up and scores, and Penn State breaks on top, and it's good to see Bruce Blake in the lineup. He was knocked unconscious in the semifinal game. Took a knee to the head. Ray Foster caught him with the knee to the head, but he's doing fine. I talked to Bruce before the game. He said, every time you do a game, Clark, when you and Fred are here, I play well. He's off to a good start here early. Tom Savage, a great three-point shooter, lets one go, and it's off the heel of the net. 
Make that break up court. Freddie Barnes pushing it up. Decided not to chance the pass. Now they take a blow to Blake. Hovass for three. And Penn State off to a great start. Hovass, an excellent three-point shooter, shooting 45%. A 6'8 senior knocks it down. And the Nickman Lions are up by five in the early going. Well, if Penn State can do that, push it inside, and then get the perimeter shot down, they're going to be effective. Ricky Dedica just answered it. He is a great three-point shooter in his own right, shooting 42%. They got numbers two on one. Hovath takes it through the lane and is foul. Bucket got it. First foul in the ball game. Hey, it is wild in here tonight. <laughs> this is what March Madness is all about. Here, Hovath has a two on one, but Dadica does a nice job getting back. And then there's the body foul by Anthony Duckett. Really didn't square up and get in front of Hovath to stop the penetration. The winner of this game tonight will be either the 14th or the 15th team in the tournament, depending on what Indiana does this evening. We have not heard their score yet. Bruce Blake, turnaround shot, good. He has four, so he has nice moves inside. He really does. He doesn't waste very much motion. He also gets out well on the break. He's off to an excellent start. Two of two with an assist. Penn State is just a miss from the floor. They're three for three, Clark, and that's exactly the kind of start you know that they wanted to get here in front of a very vociferous crowd at Rutgers. First turnover. I was so impressed with Penn State. There we get a look at Bruce Parkhill. He really doesn't like this format in terms of having the championship game on some team's home floor. He'd rather have it at a neutral site, but here in the early going, I'm sure he's pleased with the way his people are playing. Down inside, Fogel, who's had a big tournament so far. The shot blocked and out of bounds to Rutgers. The Scarlet Knights inside defense was there. Bob Wenzel, the Rutgers coach. A two-time MVP here as a player. Played first for Jim Galvano, then Bill Foster here. Danica on the run is fouled by Tom Hovath. First foul on Penn State. Hovath, the 6'8 senior from Whitefield, Colorado, just an outstanding player. Here we get a look at Rich Danica. He puts it on the floor, draws the foul on Hovath. This is one of Bruce Parkhill's concerns. He thought the Rutgers guards, Danica and Carter, could beat his guards with dribble penetration, and Danica did that on that last play. Rick Danica is a 6'2 senior from Elmwood Park, New Jersey. Rutgers it last year with a foot injury. Back this year. A surprising miss. He's an 83% free throw shooter. An excellent three point shooter. Has perhaps as good a range as anybody in the country. He will shoot from way behind the three point line. Often in the game. Hovass having trouble getting in. It was kicked. Well, you know Rutgers going to stay in that full court pressure most of the game with their crowd behind them. If they can get a couple of turnovers and conversions, that really ignites them. Danica contests the inbounds pass, but it's still Penn State basketball. The well, Rutgers tough in that press, and they can throw it on you in a hurry after a mid basket too. This is a crowd. Now they're going to throw long to Blake, and they're two on one against Duckett. Blake to Fogel, and he's fouled. To help him fold it up. He hit the back out. No foul? No foul. Just tape on the slide. Great hustle that time by Rick Dadica. Watch him get back. This is a two on one. Blake, nice lead for Fogel, but look at Dadica get in there and make the hustling save. Indiana defeated Wisconsin 75 64. So the Hoosiers win the Big Ten championship. And they become the 14th team to qualify for the NCAA. That's a double dribble. The ball comes back to Rutgers. Scarlet Knights down by three. Just listen to the crowd. To look at Bruce Parkhill, the Penn State coach. Boy, what an exciting week of basketball. 15 teams in now. The close of festivities on Sunday night, 64. Snowflakes falling harder now. Soon to become an avalanche. Starting tomorrow, really. It's an exciting time of year. It seems like this tournament just continues to get bigger and bigger and more exciting each year. Monroe Brown, they call it money at Penn State, and he nails it from the outside. Well, I tell you what, Fred, excuse me, but if they're able to knock down that perimeter shot, we talked about it in our keys, that's going to make it extra tough for Rutgers to sag in and try to deny the ball into the paint of Money Brown and Hovass and Freddie Barnes can knock down perimeter jump shot. Play was stopped because an object hit the court and the public address announcer here is reminding fans not to do that. Penn State in the man-to-man -man defense. Danica. Goodbye, Fogel. 
Kicks it back to Emory Ward. Ward makes a move and Blake puts up the jump shot. And Monroe Brown rebounds for Penn State. And the Nittany Lions are playing very well. And Monroe Brown's going to take it all the way. But Bruce Blake makes that play happen because he's out at the head of the break, Fred, forcing that defender to respect him being ahead of the pack. And then Monroe Brown just decided, I'm going to take it coast to coast. Penn State has now hit five out of six shot. Rutgers turns it over for the third time in this ballgame. It is 11 to 4 Penn State. Penn State has really played well in this tournament. They beat Rhode Island 84-68. They beat West Virginia 86-64. And both times they carved the opponent up inside. They throw it into that thing. They do an excellent job of getting low post position, creating good passing angles, and then executing and completing plays in the lane. Buddy Barnes, jump shot good, and they've hit six out of seven. Barnes picks up his first two. Everybody but Ed Fogel has scored for Penn State. And the Nittany Lions lead by nine with 15.57 left in the first half. Penn State has scored six straight points now. Well, Rutgers needs to get something positive offensively now. Penn State really on the roll as you get a foul. Looks like Bruce Blake, the way he's looking with the hands on the hips, he probably committed it. Came away from the ball. It was on Blake his first, the second on Penn State. We have time out here at Rutgers with 15.49 left in our first half. Penn State out quickly and their fans celebrating. They're up by nine. Astronomers tell us there won't be a total eclipse in America until the year 2017. They are very much mistaken. This is the year of the eclipse. Introducing the Eclipse by Mitsubishi. Try not to stare. How do you figure your financial future? How do you get an advantage? Look for an edge. Look for a company that can sharpen your opportunities in mutual funds, pensions, IRAs, employee benefit plans, insurance, and much more. Look for the principal edge from the principal financial group. One of America's largest, helping people with the fine points of their financial future, the principal. Look for the edge. SEC first round play. Teams trying to advance into the quarterfinal. The winner between Georgia and Mississippi State would face Florida. Neville Austin. Great outlet pass to Latero Green. And the outstanding freshman with a little showtime as he jams it down. The Georgia Bulldogs go on and win it. 83-68 to is the final. And they will go up against Georgia in the quarterfinals. That one coming up tomorrow. Let us now go back to Fred White. All right, thank you, John Saunders. Quite a week of basketball in college, and obviously ESPN has you right in the eye of the hurricane all week long. Well, they've got it all coming right at you. Savage trying to get it inbounds, looking, looking, and lobs way outside to Carter, almost knocked down by Monroe Brown. Now Savage from the deep corner. That was partially blocked by Ed Fogel and Fogel, and Savage hit the deck. It's a no call. Freddie Barnes. Fires outside the Blake, turned down the shot. Hovass to Barnes, inside Fogel. His first shot is good. Ed Fogel now has scored, and all five Penn State starters has, have scored tonight. There hasn't been a substitution in the game yet. Well, Bob Winslow talked about the balance, the fact that Penn State has numerous weapons, and they certainly showed that to us here in the early going, as everybody has put up points. There's Datica from way outside, coming up short on the three. Hovass rebounds to Freddie Barnes, the freshman guard. A pair of freshman guards here for this Penn State team, and a foul is called on Bruce Blake. It's his second foul. That could be a big call. That really could be. Bruce Blake working really hard to try to get low post position. Here we get a look. I don't know if you call this foul. Here it is. Him and Savage in the lane. He's working hard. Oh, oh I don't know. I think that's maybe a no call, Fred. Substitution now for Rutgers. Miles Dixon, a 6'2 senior guard, checks in. And now James Barnes is coming on the floor for Penn State. And James Barnes is a 6'7 sophomore. I'll tell you, Penn State's deep. They bring Barnes and Diggett's off the bench at the front spots. And they've got Brian Allen and Christian Appleman seniors at the guards as part of earlier this year. There's a lot. 
Ben State gets it back to lead by 11. Bruce Park will really get deep on that bench. Bob Wenzel, you're looking at here, not quite as deep at Rutgers. That's certainly a factor of the fact that Penn State can have a quality big guy like Barnes and you see him running the floor. Missed the shot. That's going to be a walk. And now it comes back to Rutgers. The Scarlet Knights down by 11. Penn State, we've talked about how well they execute offensively and throwing the ball in the paint, creating good post position, good passing angle. But they're also very tough defensively, Fred. They do a nice job in their man-to-man -man defense, really helping each other out at the defensive end. Look at these field goal percentages. 88 for Penn State, to 20 for Rutgers. Oh, what a nice move by Miles Dixon. The reverse layup left-handed. His first two, he comes off the bench to knock down a big shot for Rutgers. Now Penn State by nine. Well, Rutgers needs to do something positive every time down the floor offensively, not only to get points on the board, but it allows them to get into their full court pressure. Ball knocked loose to save by Monroe Brown. Boy, he picked that up in a dangerous spot. He really did. He was kind of straddling the timeline. He couldn't move his back foot. Barnes. Freddie Barnes to James Barnes. Pulls his way inside, and it's going to be a foul against Tom Savage. The first on Savage and the second on Rutgers. Well, I like James Barnes. He's got the big wide body, but yet he has the nice soft hand spread. Here we look at him putting it on the floor. He's just going to work his way towards the basket. Savage not quite able to square up and get completely in front. Anytime that happens, the defensive player is going to be called for the foul. The Perry now in the lineup for Rutgers. Now both coaches going to the bench. Vogel takes it inside, left-handed, and knocks down his fourth point. And Penn State is up 17 to six with 14-11 left in the first half. Christian Appleman is now in the Penn State lineup. Well, I tell you what, Penn State getting off to this great start is really taking the starts out of this Rutgers crowd. Miles Dixon throws up a wild shot, and up Penn State got Rutgers out of their offense that trip. Nice dish inside. James Barnes sticks it. Well, this is textbook in terms of throwing it down in the paint, Fred. This team playing as well as we've seen them playing. We've done three or four of their games. Rutgers has called timeout. Penn State is performing surgery in the paint. 13-49 left in the first half. Astronomers tell us there won't be a total eclipse in America until the year 2017. They are very much mistaken. This is the year of the eclipse. Introducing the Eclipse GS Turbo by Mitsubishi. Try not to stare. Play the 7-Up Final Match Game. All the excitement of college basketball. Every five seconds, someone's bottle cap can instantly score free 7-Up for the chance to win $10,000 if they match that final championship winning score. Hurry and take your shot. You're looking sharp. You're looking good. You've come so far. And we know how to make the most The Gillette Atra Plus system with the Luber Smooth Strip for the best a man can get. You know why Spud McKenzie has so much fun at parties? Because he's always in control. Spud knows it's cool to live by one simple rule. No when to say when. A reminder from Anheuser-Busch. Whack quarterfinal play, BYU and the University of Hawaii. This game underway, and Vincent Smalls grabs a rebound for Hawaii. Fires down court to Phil Lott. Wide open for the jam. The Rainbows go up by two, but it was tied 39-39 at halftime. Winner of this game will face the Colorado State and Utah winner. Let us go back to Fred White and Clark Kellogg. All right, thank you, John Saunders. This telecast is an exclusive presentation of Creative Sports Marketing in association with ESPN. Any use, rebroadcast, or other transmission of this game without the written consent of Creative Sports Marketing and ESPN is prohibited. 19 to 6, Penn State. Clark Penn State doing everything well. They really are. The pace of this game is in favor of Penn State. Rutgers has not been able to disrupt them at all offensively, and in their offensive end, they haven't been able to get those types of shots. Savage hits the two, his first pass for the night. 
Rutgers now three for eight. Penn State is nine for 11. And Penn State has out rebounded Rutgers six to one. Hovass shots in and out rebound. Tom Savage. Rutgers with a chance maybe to put something together here now. Well, not the best shot in the fast and in breaking the pressure. Pull up for a one on two jump shot, although Hovass a great shooter. That's what Rutgers is going to have to do, I think, Fred. They're going to have to turn the RPMs up, try to make it more of a healthy, healthy game. Anthony Duckett takes it to the lane, shoots it off balance, misses. James Barnes forces the rebound away for Penn State and gives to Christian Appleman. The Nittany Lions to Hovass. Threw it inside the total and went through his legs and picked up by Duckett. Ball 47 left in first half action here. Dedica down the baseline. Oh, what a great shot by oh, Rick Dedica. He has six points tonight. Pretty move off the penetration. Rutgers press. Brian Allen is in the guard now for Penn State. Ian Appleman, the seniors who were the starting guards at the, at the beginning of the year, are in there together now. That's really helped the Penn State ball club, Fred, to be able to start the two freshmen and bring two seniors with a wealth of experience in off the bench. Bad pass. Fogel threw it right in the hands of Rick Dedica. Dedica drops it to Lee Perry, and that's going to be a charge. Hovast was there and set. Perry banged into him his first foul. Team fouls even at three apiece. Well, you've either got to clearly get around Hovast or stop and pull up for the jumper. Here's Lee Perry coming right at you. Hovast in pretty good position. Perry trying to create something that really wasn't there. Another angle. A little fake, a little fake look away by Dadica. Good call. You know, Hovass taking that charge. First to pass to Barnes. Hovass is playing with a bad back. He has a broken nose. And he cut his left hand trying to slice a dinner roll at the pregame meal before the semifinal game in Philadelphia. And probably got a little stomach and chest ache now after <laughs> taking that block. I was going to say, it came to mind when he got hit there. I think he... Tom Savage just got called for his second foul. He did. Just a little note that Tom Hovass and Christian Appleman are roommates both at school and on the road. Together, they broke their noses in the game in Philadelphia in the quarterfinal game. Together, they've had seven broken noses. I wouldn't go visit them in that room. I'd stay away from those guys, too. Stolen by Dadica. He's got Miles Dixon up there. Dixon has come off the bench to score four. Now Rutgers slaps the press on. C.J. Johnson fires it up court to Brian Allen. The off-balance shot, no. And a foul is called on Miles Dixon. <laughs> Brian Allen wants, the, wants two freebies. He thought he was fouled in the shooting motion. Mercer Farrell says he got him on the floor. Miles Dixon getting back after he scored at the other end. Here's Allen and Dixon chasing him down. Reaches in. In the NBA, that's two shots, Fred, but I realize we're in the college game. This is the Atlantic 10 Conference Championship game at Rutgers. With 11.44 left in the first half, Penn State leading Rutgers 19-12. to 12. The first two rounds of the tournament, first three rounds, I should say, were played at the Palestra in Philadelphia on a neutral site. And then the championship game goes to the home court of the highest remaining, highest seeded remaining team, and that is Rutgers, the number three seed. Both West Virginia, the one seed, and Temple, the two seed, defeated in the semifinals. Temple beaten in overtime by Rutgers, 62-59. Penn State beat West Virginia, 86-64. Mark, looks like the Atlantic 10 will have four teams in postseason play of some type. Brian Allen off the heel of the ring. Rebound to Emory Ward for Rutgers. West Virginia certainly is in the NCAA. The winner of this one goes. Temple, who knows? Maybe, maybe not. But they're, really, they're really on the bubble. The loser of this game should go to the NIT, and if Temple doesn't go to the NCAA, they're surely going to get an invitation to the NIT. So at least four teams will go to postseason play out of the Atlantic 10 this year. This is really a nice way to end the season for this conference. Really, when you look at the fact that these two teams end up in the conference championship game, probably the best scenario overall for the conference in terms of possibly having four teams in postseason play. Well, you have to feel that the Temple and West Virginia are going to sustain those excellent programs they've had for a number of seasons now. We might be looking at the wave of the future here. Both these programs are on the rise. On the rise, they've got a solid foundation started here with Wenzel and Bruce Park here. You never can underestimate what this type of exposure and success can do for a program that's had little success in past years. Craig Carter hits his first two points of the night. Carter's first bucket. Hovass to Brian Allen. Now Rutgers within five. An eight to two run for the Scarlet Knights, and they're back in it. 
Penn State now needs to tone down, take their time, display a little patience here. C.J. Johnson in a bit of trouble. Where's it back outside to Freddie Barnes? Well, you know what, because they aren't going to give up. I tell you what, these guys play with so much emotion. That's a credit for Wenzel and his coaching staff as well as the players. They get out here and get after it, never say die. And reward is called for a foul. That's going to put them in the one and one. That's the seventh team foul on Rutgers now. Well, spot it right there. There's the over the top pass. Well, you. Oh, Emory Ward really just trying to fight for good defensive position. And James Barnes maybe got away with a little push there. Looked like Ward wrapped his arm around him as he came past him, though. C.J. Johnson now is out of the lineup. Double. Back in. James Barnes on the line, the 6'7 sophomore. Something else Penn State's been doing extremely well was shooting free throws for the tournament. Bob Wenzel obviously unhappy with that call, talking to one of the officials. 10 24 left in the first half. Penn State by six. I think it hurts Rutgers a little more when they have to go to their bench because they just haven't gotten the proven production from their bench players, as has Penn State in terms of Barnes and Deggett and certainly Appleman. And Allen has given them a nice lift off the bench in the tunnel. Danica, jumper from the line, rolls off the rim. Ball hammered back up there, and then Fogel's going to be called for a foul. The Penn State center draws his first foul. Team foul number four on the Nittany Lions. Rutgers has not led on this game. Penn State jumped on him quickly. Tom Savage back in. Emory Ward out of the lineup now to catch a little breather here for Rutgers. Savage handling the inbounds pass, looking, bit of trouble with it, but he gets Craig Carter. They try to get it to duck at the ball, hit the rim, picked off by Fogel to Freddie Barnes. What a nice transition defense by the Knights. James Barnes, Ed Fogel. Rutgers really putting the pressure on defensively now, and Freddie Barnes sticks a three. His fifth point, the freshman from Greensboro, North Carolina's Dudley High School, just nailed one in this back to a nine-point lead for Penn State with 9.39 left in the first half. Well, we talked about perimeter shooting, and he was the guy we focused on, Freddie Barnes. Look at that range by Danica. Fires from outside, misses. It was tipped away by Lee Perry out of bounds. It'll be Penn State basketball. Dave Diggett's a freshman now, replaces James Barnes. Well, you have to wonder with their size and also with their depth up front, Fred, whether or not Penn State is going to eventually wear down Rutgers because Rutgers, although they're quick jumpers, they're active, they just don't have the overall size that Penn State has. And over the course of a game like this, it can eventually wear you down. Freddie Barnes, Tom Hovass at the top of the circle. Baseline, Fogel puts up the jumper. Good. Ed Fogel's had a tournament. He had 45 points in the first two games Penn State played. Now he has a half dozen in this one here tonight. Rutgers needs to get Vatican and Savage going. Vatican is just two for six. And Tom Savage has only one field goal tonight. Baseline, Craig Carter open for the 10th shot. He gets it. Craig Carter has four. That's also a guy that can give them some point production in bunches. Craig Carter. The press causing problems, but Penn State saves the ball. They get it up to Hovass. He's going to hold it up for a moment. Well, I'm talking to Bruce Parker. He said in both games earlier during the regular season that the press never really bothered Penn State so far. The night start of night haven't been able to get a whole lot out of the press. It's been bothersome but not productive. <laughs> Good point. Brian Allen, that's a three. The senior guard, Brian Allen, has five points. He's a 6'3 senior from Reston, Virginia, and Penn State leads by a dozen now. They led by 13 earlier. 8-11 left in the first half. Bucket. I'll tell you what, Brian Allen is not going to let you have the easy shot. He'll spend the foul. <laughs> Penn State has all hit all three three-point field goal attempts tonight. They're three for three from behind the line. Here's a nice little pick and roll. Pick and fade that time between Danica and Duckett. And Brian Allen coming over from behind. Obvious foul. Brian Allen out of the game now. Substitution for Penn State. Another down back in. <laughs> Whoa. See those field goal numbers 12 for 16. 
Penn State, they've done it in a variety of ways, Fred, as Duckett misses the first free throw. They've done it inside, and they've also knocked down three three-pointers. Park, it may sound silly, but Penn State's playing pretty basketball now. They're doing it the way that Bruce Parkfield drew it on the board. Oh, diagram basketball at its best. You know, on the chalkboard, those X's and O's don't move. But Penn State able to pull that out of the locker room. And so far, they've executed their game plan perfectly. We've talked about it before. It's one thing to have a good game plan, but the players still have to execute it. <laughs> and, got that right. In these tournament games, Bruce Parkhill and the coaches at Penn State have really put together three excellent game plans, and his players have gone out and done it. They're an intelligent, veteran group of players, and they're playing very well right now. Playing with a lot of confidence. The kind of success they've had in the tournament thus far breeds confidence. Rutgers duck it, knocked it away, but it's saved, and Hobas takes a three from the corner that won't drop, and Duckett clears the rebound. The Danica. Quickly up court to Savage, who takes the baseline, wheels inside and scores. Oh, oh, what a nifty piece of ball handling that time by Savage to elude two Penn State defenders. Well, he's strong inside and has great range. He's a 49% shooter from three-point territory. Nine-point lead to Penn State, 7-10 left in the first half. Vogel handles it inside. Knocked out of there by Deppert. Oh, really, now... Rutgers is playing tougher defense inside right now. There's Savage in the corner with it. The They're a little more active. They're putting pressure on the shots. And coming up with the defensive boards a little better. There haven't been many defensive boards. Penn State shooting the next one percentage. Savage to drive again. That time it rolls off the front of the rim. He's a little bit off balance. Lenny Brown right back for Penn State. Oh, look at that Rutgers defense inside. One, three, one zone, very active. Trying to keep that ball out of the paint. There's Fogel flashing into the lane. No high-low action by Penn State. Freddie Barnes at the corner. First two games in the tournament, Penn State's inside people were able to catch a little bounce pass as they were moving to the basket with a guy on their hip. Rutgers has taken that away from him so far. Got blocked in there. Rutgers out on the break. Savage is going to take it with Hovass and give it up to Craig Carter, who's fouled. The shot's going to fall. Count it. I believe they will count the basket. Yep. Give Craig Carter the deuce. He has six points. Hovass has his second foul. Here we get a look at the 1-3-1. Active hands by Duckett there. Penn State retrieves. But there's a turnover initiated by Danica. Watch this nice lead by Savage for Craig Carter. He's going to make the defense commit. Now drop it off beautifully. And there's Carter strongly to the basket. With a foul there by Hovass. There's a nice drop off. Hovass tries to recover. The nice body usage by Craig Carter. And Duff. How about that hairstyle? <laughs> and that emotion. Craig Carter at the line for the first time. And I talked a moment ago, we talked about what a great game plan Penn State devised. Bob Warren's on his staff of counter with the defense that's working right now. Well, I figured they'd have to go with the zone and really try to force Penn State to beat them from outside. So far, Penn State has been able to convert the perimeter jump shot, but there's only so much you can take away from a well-balanced offensive team. You just can't take away everything, so you have to go with the percentage. Well, you can bet that pretty soon now, Tom Hovass will start looking for threes. There's Craig Carter, just committed his first foul on the reach after missing the free throw. Maybe a little bit of frustration. Maybe. A lot of emotion in this type of game. I think both teams have settled in nicely, though. Penn State certainly not bothered by any emotional problems in the first part of this game. They came out very strong. It was always so fun when I was at Ohio State to play in these types of games. You knew the place was going to be stuffed to the rafters and people were there an hour before game time. You could just kind of feel the electricity and the, and the thickness in the crowd. Well, this is excitement here at Rutgers. 6.05 left in the first half. Penn State up by nine. They have led all the way to this point. Rico Premium Copiers, built to work, built to last, and sold by American Office Equipment, your authorized Rico dealer. Avery! My new. This is no problem, Mr. Bigsley. <laughs> Good. What time is it now? Oh, it, uh, this is not a problem, Mr. Bigsley. American Office Equipment, I've got a problem. American Office Equipment for professional sales and service, call 1-800-TEAM-AOE for that attention to detail that keeps problems from coming back. This goes on a Geo Prism, and this goes on a Toyota Corolla. What they go on is basically the same car. As you know, Prism is made jointly by GM and Toyota. Yet Prism shops at $1,025 less than look-alike Corolla. 
And with this emblem on it, we add a bonus of electronic fuel injection, not in the Corolla. Take your pick. 1990 Geo Prism at $1,025 less, or 1989 Corolla for $1,025 more. The writers of Motor Trend magazine road tested a lot of cars before the Mitsubishi Galant. They road tested a lot of cars after it, but no other car was so well conceived, so well crafted, so thoroughly satisfying to drive. And that is why they marked the occasion in the most significant way they could. The Mitsubishi Galant, Motor Trend Import Car of the Year. In the Big West quarterfinal, UC Santa Barbara, a winner over Long Beach State, 69-57. to Midwestern Collegiate quarterfinal in Dayton. St. Louis beats Butler. They'll face Xavier in the semifinals. In the Big East first round, Boston College beats St. John's at Madison Square Garden. So they'll face the Georgetown Hoyas next in the quarterfinals. That coming tomorrow. Let's go back to the Atlantic 10. All right, thank you once again, John. We have 6.05 within our first half. 30-21, Penn State. The Nittany Lions grab the lead. They've led all the way. They've been up by as many as 13. At the moment, they're up by nine. Gattaca, Craig Carter, Lee Perry. Over the top, Duckett's in there, and he's fouled by Monroe Brown. First on Monroe Brown, and now both teams are in the one and one. On behalf of the Scarlet Knights and the Nittany Lions, Anheuser-Busch will make a $500 donation to local students against drunk driving chapters at both Rutgers and Penn State. Congratulations on advancing to the Atlantic 10 Championships. Anthony Deckett, 6'6", junior from Washington, D.C., Spring Arm High School. Has one point tonight. He didn't start playing until he was a junior in high school. There's Joe Paterno made the trip down from Penn State to watch the Nittany Lion basketball team tonight. There's a little something about winning, doesn't he? <laughs> I'd say he does. Brooks is back off the press for the first time. This half. We're going to just go with the 1-3-1 one, half-court zone been pretty productive and effective for him over the last six or seven minutes. He's packed back in that 1-3-1 one, one zone. So far, it's denied the ball inside pretty well, and it does again as Lee Perry deflects. The ball loose on the floor. Is he out of bounds? No. Great save by Rick Danica. Ricky Danica was able to keep it from going out of bounds. Rutgers within seven, and the lob the Perry knocked away. That's Jennifer Savage, excuse me, knocked away by James Barnes. Well, we talked about Penn State's perimeter shooting. As much as they love to throw it inside, they're going to have to adjust if, in fact, this zone continues to bother them. Look at Danica. Ho! Oh, oh, Ho! They missed one there. He was clearly out of bounds. But You're going to have him. The official was screened. He yeah, was behind him. Right. couldn't see that's over right. the top. He never saw his foot down. Exactly right. Those guys aren't perfect. I like the line you had, Fred, that they start out perfect and have to get better as Wait, the game Ruth. goes on. Savage. Brian Allen may be hurt. He went down. He's up and appears to be all right. Oh, Savage. Oh, oh. Brian Allen swept down and Savage went to the basket. That was Savage. He really won. <laughs> That's what you call a big time flush, Fred. Right over a defender. Now the crowd back in it. Rutgers within five and Penn State needs something to restore order. And Barnes tries to get a catch. They get the freshman threw the ball off of Rutgers out of bounds. I really don't know why he did it. I think he was trying to get it to his own guy, maybe. Well, I think he actually just lost control. He was trying to get the rebound and just slipped through his hands. And fortunately for, Ruck, for Penn State, it bounced off of Rutgers' player. Then Fogel back in. Dave Douglas, the freshman, sits down now. Brian Allen inbounds to Freddie Barnes. 4.39 left in the first half. Deep corner to Allen. To Barnes. Tough work to Fogel. The shot on the rim doesn't go. Look at him battle for the rebound. It's on the deck, and it's going to be Rutgers basketball. James Barnes threw his body on the floor trying to save it and couldn't. Here we get a look at the missed shot, the tail end of the missed shot, the ball on the floor. Bodies all over, and Barnes, oh, so close. So it looked like Maybe one of the seams must have touched the out-of-bounds line. It feet inside to Deckett. Brian Allen was called for a foul. Right now, it's going Rutgers' way. They were down by 13. They're within five now. Well, I really think the 1-3-1 has made a difference. They've become more active and aggressive in it. And some of the early shots that fell for 
That man's team, Bruce Parkhill's team, there you get a look at Winslow. Some of those earlier shots that fell for Penn State have not gone down and give Rutgers credit for being more active and aggressive in their zone defense. Two excellent young coaches in this basketball team. Tom Savage gets his seventh point. 6'5", sophomore from Trenton, New Jersey. A transfer from Virginia Tech. Two-time All-Stater. The game eligible midway through last season, and he's averaging 20 points a game. Well, you, you want to know how serious he is about this game? During the warm-ups, about a half an hour prior to game time, his teammate threw him a bad pass, and he gave him a stare that was <laughs> unbelievable. Rutgers within three after being down by 13. Penn State has been calm for a while. Rutgers defense has stifled the Mitten Lion offense and is going to do it again. It is Rutgers basketball and a three would tie it with 359 left in the game. Listen to the crowd. This is a huge advantage of being on your floor to get the crowd back into it. They can be so instrumental. Carter, it's a one-point game. Craig Carter has eight points. 30-29, Penn State, 338 left in the first half, and Bob Wenzel up off the bench, firing up this crowd in his club. They are all standing along the Rutgers bench. Knocked away inside again. Boy, they're contesting every pass. Brian Allen tries a three and gets it from the deep corner. That is a big basket for Penn State. Brian Allen has eight points in this game. Boy, huge, huge, huge hoop that time by Allen. Danica drives the baseline, left hands it up, and a tremendous shot by oh, Danica. Oh, oh my, left hand, that almost hit the shot clock. I like Bill. Danica has eight, two-point lead Penn State. Three minutes left in the first half. On the ground to the baseline to Allen, one fake, up goes a shot off the front of the rim. Lee Perry slaps it out, picked up by Money Brown, and he's fouled. Uh-oh, that was Tom Savage, third foul. That's a big foul. He's going to have to sit down now for the rest of the half. You just can't risk having him on the floor with three. He doesn't like it, but he's going to have to sit down until the break. Looks like Emory Ward. Oh, now check this shot out. Penetration on the baseline. Barely lets it go before he comes down high off the window. Well, he had a bunch of English on that one. Look at this shot. Look at this shot. Left hand. I mean, right to the top of the backboard. Cleanly through. Gotta have a proper backspin, backspin on that one, Fred. That's great coaching, isn't it? <laughs> right, yeah. You can't teach that shot. Money Brown. Five points, Money Brown. I'll tell you, Rick Daddick is a heck of a player. He didn't get a play here last year because of a stress fracture to his foot. He has really made a difference this year. He's a heady performer, almost like a coach on the floor. Three-point lead, Penn State, 248 left in the first half. Dattica gives it to Miles Dixon. The savage out, Dattica is now kind of a lone three-point threat, although Lee Perry will shoot it from three-point range, and so will Dixon on occasion. But with Dattica and Savage both in there, they can really balance the floor with two three-point shooters. Dixon to the lane. Miles Dixon has six. Boy, that's a nice move. Again, Bruce Parkfield concerned about Rutgers' ability to put the ball on the floor and penetrate against his players who he doesn't think are as laterally quick as the Rutgers players. James Barnes, Brian Allen, another three-point attempt. No good. James Barnes couldn't get enough balance to get off the floor, and Emory Ward got the rebound for Rutgers, and here are the Scarlet Knights with a chance to lead for the first time in this game with 155 left in the first half. Danica against Brown. Perry. Miles Dixon. Second. And Rutgers goes in front for the first time tonight. Thirty-five, thirty-four, Scarlet Knights. Five for Anthony Duckett. Vogel got the ball to Barnes. It's off his hands, out of bounds. One of the few times lately Penn State's been able to get it down in there and then they mishandled the pass. Time out here. 108 left in the first half. Look at this crap. Honda. 
presents Definitions of the Game. Acceleration. An increase in speed. One who causes action to happen sooner. Acceleration, as defined by Calvin Murphy. The shape is distinctively advanced. The cockpit, designed for comfortable travel over time and distance. The Honda Prelude SI. Likely ahead of its time machine. Say, so where'd you learn to dunk? In finishing school? Oh, now don't you start telling me I shouldn't dunk. Of course you shouldn't. You don't know how to do it. Dunking's an art. It's all a matter of timing. Well, I'll write a book about it. Thanks, Professor. All you need is a little penetration to force the defense to come up and respect that penetration. Here's Miles Dixon. Just a little penetration. Barnes comes up to help and ducking on the baseline for the Duke. Rutgers coming away from Coach Bob Wenzel, their first lead of the ball game. They're up 35-34 with a minute eight left in the first half, and now they have the basketball back. They have the lead and the ball. Well, the defense, one three one of Rutgers has really choked off the inside game of Penn State. That's what it's designed to do. Keep the ball out of the paint. And Penn State, they've gotten it in there maybe once or twice, and because it's been so long since they've had it in there, due to the great defense by Rutgers, they haven't been able to convert. And Rutgers has warmed up. They're now shooting 61% from the floor. Dixon throws it back to Lee Perry. Goes after a three and gets it from the deep corner. Lee Perry's first bucket of the game. And Rutgers up by four with 38 seconds left in the half. Penn State may need this halftime break. They really do. They need a basketball in the break, though. They've been a long time scoring. Kyle Dixon has an outstanding half off the bench on the start of the night. He scored a couple and penetrated. Oh, nice pass. That's a cold 10. Anthony Beckett or a foul. They're going to call it a foul. Lenny Brown made a great pass down inside. It's a foul on Anthony Duckett, his second. And this is what Penn State has to do more. Here's penetration by Monty Brown. You see Rick Daddy can come over to help. That allows C.J. Johnson to get that open area on the left side of the hoop. There's Coach Wenzel. I guess he didn't think that was a foul, huh? <laughs> I thought Duckett got his hand in the net, too. He may have. He may have touched the net a little bit. C.J. Johnson's free throw. Oh, he banged it in from out front. Got to call that one. Yeah, you definitely have to call that one. Loud. Bob Wenzel still objecting to the foul call. Penn State now within three. Christian Appleman now is going to replace Brian Allen at a guard with 23 seconds left in the half. C.J. Johnson here, a 6'8 sophomore, could get Penn State within two points. The Nittany Lions led by 13 at one time. Both free throws good. 23 seconds left in the half. Rutgers up by two, and now they have a chance to get the last shot of the half. Jonathan. Going to be met by Freddie Barnes at midcourt. Miles Dixon. I'll tell you what, he did exactly what I think he'd do. Penetrating this. The shot missed, but the tip good by Lee Perry. Tom Everson missed. Lee Perry tipped it in. He has five. And now there's a foul on Dunnikin. <laughs> First foul on Rick Dunnikin. That's the real live one over there. That's not a wind sickle there. That's the real guy. <laughs> He's upset. That foul comes with no time on the clock. And Charlotte Knights can head to the locker room if they so wish. Freddie Barnes going to get two shots. Or unless they called him on the floor and he's going to get the one and one. Looks like the one and one. Freddie Barnes now three for three at the line. The freshman has eight points. To get Penn State within two at halftime here. And does. 
So we have arrived at halftime. Let's go back and take a look at the last play. Here's the play that sent Barnes to the line with no time. Well, actually, we're seeing the tail end of it. Couldn't see much there. And the His reaction. reaction to it to let you know what Wenzel thought of the call. Bob Lepenzel, a very fiery coach on the Rutgers sideline. We're at halftime. Rutgers 40, Penn State 38. Back to John Saunders. Okay, thanks a lot, gentlemen. A very close one between two teams who really weren't expected to be there. Rutgers knocked off Temple, the number two seed, and Penn State took out West Virginia, the number one seed in the Atlantic 10. So these teams are trying to join the 15 already in the field of 64 for the NCAA tournament. And we've had three more teams get in there today. Middle Tennessee State from the Ohio Valley Conference. They beat Austin P earlier on ESPN. Indiana, the regular season champions in the Big Ten, no tournament there. They beat Wisconsin tonight to clinch that automatic berth. Arkansas Little Rock out of the Trans-America. McNeese State from the Southland Conference, the first time they've been in there. Southwest Missouri State from the Mid-Continent. Creighton from the Missouri Valley Conference. The East Coast Conference representative is Bucknell. Loyola Marymount sends in from the West Coast Athletic Conference. LaSalle from the Metro Atlantic. George Mason, another one of those teams in there for the first time into the tournament from the Colonial. South Alabama from the Sun Belt. From the Southern Conference, it's East Tennessee State. And South Carolina State, the third team that's in there for the first time from the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. Robert Morris from the Northeast and Princeton from the Ivy League, which also does not have a conference tournament. As we told you earlier, Indiana beat Wisconsin, and with that, they eliminated Illinois from their chance of tying them for the championship in the Big Ten, and Indiana clinched it outright. Bobby Knight raging to grab a Big Ten title, and Bob Knight seemed always great on defense. Joe Hillman steps in on Willie Sims and takes the charge. Offense, Jay Edwards with a three-point field goal. Edwards at 15 points. Eric Anderson posting up. He had 19 points. The Hoosiers up by four at halftime. Todd Jadlow to Jay Edwards to Jadlow for the dunk. 75 to 64. Bobby Knight left no doubt as to who the MVP is. We're not talking about the best player. We're talking about the most valuable. And if you run into Dick Vitale or anybody else, or anybody else that disputes the fact that Joe Hillman is the most valuable player in the Big Ten, then you tell them to stick it up their ass. I think Dick Vitale limits his things like that to standing on his head, but 75 to 64 is the final. Joe Hillman, the guy Bobby Knight was talking about, had 17 points. The Hoosiers, their 10th outright Big Ten championship. Now, also in the Big Ten, number eight, Michigan. A winner over Northwestern, 88 to 79. They've won the last 10 meetings. Glenn Rice had 26 points. And the Ohio State Buckeyes, oh, how this team has struggled since losing Jay Burson, who broke a bone in his neck. They're down to Purdue, 54 to 31, 0 and 5 without Burson. Before he went out, they averaged over 83 points, now just about 68. Stay with us, more score highs and highlights in a moment. Diet Colas must think 3D makes you thirsty. Let's see. Wow, you can almost touch it. Now, if you feel thirsty, ask yourself, was it the 3D, or can you just see more clearly now? Lighten up. Diet 7-Up. It has a classic design and an engine that sings. <laughs> Sarah, keep an eye on your brother. Face it, you never really know how demanding business is going to be. So more and more companies are choosing Conaga, a copiers they know they can rely on. Let's go, kids. No matter what size your company, no matter what size the job, Conaga copiers are ready. Conaga, capturing the imagination.
view your insurance needs with MetLife. Get Met. It pays. ESPN's NCAA Basketball, the Atlantic 10 Conference Championship Game, is brought to you by Honda, who invites you to test drive the Accord LXI four-door sedan at your local Honda dealership today. By Nike, who reminds you to just do it. And by 7-Up, the choice for refreshment. Cool me down, 7-Up. Rutgers leading Penn State by two. We're at halftime in the Atlantic 10 Championship Game. Now, elsewhere today, the Southeastern Conference Tournament, Georgia and Mississippi State. These two teams playing to see who would face Florida. Battle of the Bulldog. Greg Lockhart dribbles down. This is to Tony Watts. Mississippi State's looking strong. Alec Kessler muscles one through. 36-35 Georgia at the half. Second half, Patrick Hamilton with a nice baseline move. Throws it up and in. Star of the game, though, is Latero Green. Takes the pass. And then showtime as he dunks it down. Final minutes, Georgia by as much as 13. Neville Austin with the alley-oop to Rod Cole. Georgia Bulldogs, 83-68 winner over Mississippi State. So they advance to play Florida in the quarterfinals. Latero Green had 30 points in the game. Also the Southeastern Conference first round. Auburn and Mississippi. Auburn up by 8. 38 to 30. The winner will play number two Alabama in the quarterfinals tomorrow. Big East tournament. Boston College goes into Madison Square Garden and knocks off St. John's on their home floor. 81 to 74. Boston College now goes on to face Georgetown. In that game, Dana Barrow said 38. That's a new tournament record, breaking Sherman Douglas mark of 35 set two years ago. So BC gets to play Georgetown, Villanova and Pitt, Providence and Syracuse, Connecticut and Seton Hall. Those games all played tomorrow at Madison Square Garden. Elsewhere. The Trans-America Championship, Arkansas Little Rock gets the victory 100-72 is the final as James Scott had 23 points there. The Big West quarterfinal, Utah State and Fullerton State, it had to go to overtime and in this one Cedric Sabalos had the dunk with 11 seconds left and he wins the game 87-86. The Titans 5-1 and in OT this year. Also in Long Beach, California, Long Beach State loses on their home floor 69-57 to UC Santa Barbara. The 49ers getting beaten right there in front of their home crowd. Still there at Long Beach, California, was Fresno State and New Mexico State. This one early on, 19-11, eight-point lead for New Mexico State. And this game, a reminder, will send them towards the Big West Conference Championship game, which is Saturday at 6 here on ESPN as we continue on Championship Week. This is Day 6, and there's plenty more to come. Back with more in just a moment. We're at halftime in the Atlantic 10. percent APR financing on select Pontiacs in stock at Copland Pontiac, North Broad Street, Elizabeth. Thinking of getting engaged? Don't buy that diamond before you shop jewelry by Exquisite. We guarantee that nobody beats our prices on diamonds because we buy direct from European sources and deliver savings to you. We'll teach you the finer points of diamond buying. And with on-the-spot financing, you can have your diamond today. Visit Jewelry by Exquisite for all your jewelry needs, from diamonds to fine 14-karat gold. Jewelry by Exquisite on the corner of Washington Avenue and Route 28 in Dunellen. Thinking of buying a diamond? Think Jewelry by Exquisite. Someday, when I'm awfully low, when the world is cold, I will feel a glow just thinking of you and the way you look tonight. The night belongs to Michelob. Please fill in the space. Which car has the largest list of standard luxury features of any car in its class? Which car has more front leg room than any car in its class? Which car? This car. The new Honda Civic LX four-door sedan. Just fill in the space.
Rutgers leads Penn State by two at halftime of the Atlantic 10 Championship. Elsewhere in the WAC quarterfinals being played in Salt Lake City, Utah, Wyoming, the number seven seed, almost pulled off the upset against UTEP, the number two seed, Claus L. Williams. Big offensive rebound, hits it and is fouled. Now he misses the free throw. They're tied at 65 and going to overtime. In overtime, Wyoming down by three. Kenny Smith drives, loses the ball to Clausel Williams. Hits it, is fouled again. This time he does hit the extra point and sends it to double OT. But it was all UTEP in the second overtime. Hardaway on the break. Antonio Davis comes in and slams it down. And the Miners open up the big lead and hang on for the seven-point victory, 88 to 81. UTEP has never lost in the first round of the WAC championship and they get the win. Wyoming, even though they lost, they had a new WAC record, 11 three-pointers in the game for a single tournament game. Also in the WAC, Air Force and New Mexico will be New Mexico up against UTEP because they win this one 74 to 60 over Air Force's Rob Robbins had 25 points. WAC quarterfinal also, BYU and Hawaii. It's a close one in the second half, 65 to 63. The winner plays the Utah Colorado State winner of that game coming up later. And here on ESPN, you can see yet another championship game, the WAC championship, Saturday night at 10 Eastern time, live from Salt Lake City, Utah. In Hartford, Connecticut, they are playing games without fans because of the measles epidemic. And you can see the teams that have advanced. Siena will face Hartford. Siena and Hartford, those are the teams that started things with the measles. Siena then gave it to Hartford, and the teams will meet again. Northeastern will go up against Boston University in a battle of teams from Boston to see who will reach the final. We have more to come. We're at a halftime in the Atlantic 10 Championship. Rutgers clinging to a brief lead over Penn State. Hello. I just looked at these numbers. Pretty grim. Those are computer costs. Well, didn't we pay for those systems last quarter? We did, but those are training costs. Well, let me get this straight. We're spending more on training than we did on the computers? Boston doesn't show these costs. They use a different system. So? Apparently with their computers, the people can train themselves. You're looking sharp, you're looking good, you've come so far, and we know how to make the most of who you are, father to son, it's what we've always done, Gillette, the, the Gillette Atra Plus system with the Luba Smooth Strip for Gillette. the best a man can get. Yo, Holmes, yo, Holmes, yo, Holmes. Mars Black and Chill, Chill, Chill of Air Jordan, Air Jordan, Air Jordan, who's been serving them hard jams, jams, jams all day with these thumping sneakers. Do you understand? These sneakers be housing, housing across the country. Comprende? And every homeboy keep bum rushing to get some, get some. They're hype. Cabiche? And I ain't front. So if you're ill and a lamp to buy some, you'll be a toy. Am I making myself clear? Uh-uh. New Air Jordans from Nike are here. Uh-huh. Play the seven up final match game. All the excitement of college basketball. Every five seconds, someone's bottle cap can instantly score free seven up or the chance to win ten thousand dollars. If they match that final championship winning score, hurry and take your shot. Sarah, keep an eye on your brother. No matter what size your business, no matter what size the job, Konica copiers are ready. Konica, capturing the imagination. ESPN's NCAA Basketball, the Atlantic 10 Conference Championship Game, is brought to you by Acura Legend and Integra. Precision crafted performance exclusively at your Acura dealer. By new Michelob Drive, one taste and you'll drink it dry. And by Rude, Rude is air conditioning. In Dayton, Ohio, the Midwestern Collegiate Quarterfinals today. Loyola of Illinois facing Xavier. Loyola loses it by two, 85 to 83. Xavier's won the last three tournaments. Also there, the Midwestern Quarterfinal, Butler and St. Louis. St. Louis, the Billikens, a winner by four, 68 to 64. So those two teams will meet in the semifinal, and the Midwestern Collegiate will be here at eight on Saturday. Let's go back to the Atlantic 10. All right, thank you, John Saunders. There's the halftime margin, two to Rutgers. 
They got their first lead with two minutes left in the half. Penn State led by as many as 13 early. Clark, they really got it off to a great start, but Rutgers has played very well down the stretch of the first half. Well, the zone defense has really been the key. They forced some turnovers, been able to convert those turnovers, and started shooting a much better percentage than they did in the early going. Let's take a look at some halftime stats here. Field goal shooting, Rutgers cold early. Now shooting 62% on 16 of 26, Penn State really shot it well for the first half. 13 for 23, but not quite enough to keep him in front. Let's take a look at some first half action. This is Tom Savage. What a movie. Well, this will it. always help your shooting percentage when you can get it to the paint and watch him explode and flush this one right in Dave Deggett's face. Well, actually in his chest, somewhere on his upper body. All over him. <laughs> <laughs> Turnovers in the first half, Penn State finally fell victim to the Rutgers press. They turned it over 10 times. Most of those from the midpoint of the half on, Rutgers took care of the ball, turning it over only six times. And Penn State taking advantage of the turnovers. Here's one right here. You're gonna see Vatican get the steal. There it is, the easy basket opportunity when you get the turnover. Miles Dixon, who had an impressive first half with six points and two assists, really gave them a spark to Scarlet Knights off the bench. So Rutgers with the lead and the basketball to start the second half with the Lewis Brown Athletic Center on Rutgers campus, cross campus at the Livingston Center and the barn. They're showing this game on closed circuit television. There was such a ticket to man. Tom Savage trying to open the second half of the three misses and Ward slams it back outside, but it's out of bounds to Penn State. Clark, we had a chance to make a quick visit to the Livingston Center and kids were fired up over there tonight. They were ready to go. Standing room only. Eventually, when we got there, it was rather early, and the place was still filled pretty good. So those students right now enjoying the fact that their team on top by a deuce. Today, the tickets went on sale. If you weren't lined up by 7 a.m., you didn't get one. Right inside the Bruce Lake goes Penn State to open the second half, and the game is tied at 40. That's, That's just the way they started the game, but Bruce Blake had to sit down because he picked up a couple of quick fouls. And if he can stay out of foul trouble, he could be a real factor. The first four or five minutes of this first half is going to be key as to who tries to seize control of this one. And Fogel with a steal. Money Brown slides the baseline inside Bruce Blake. That's rejected by Anthony Duckett. Up to Craig Carter. Make the dish to Savage. And comes to Penn State. Betty Barnes able to pick it off. Savage couldn't quite come up with the pass. Penn State now with a chance to regain the lead. Craig Carter probably should have tried to take that ball to the middle. That was a tough pass he tried to make. Penn State doing a nice job getting back to country. Somebody in this game is going to the NCAA. Freddie Barnes missed. Bruce Blake had it. It's out of bounds to Penn State. Connecticut got a hand on Rutgers has been to the NCAA four times. They're in the Final Four in 1976. They were last there in 1983. They beat Southwest Louisiana, then lost to St. John's up in Hartford. Penn State has been there five times, one more than Rutgers, but they haven't been there since 1965. Great Carter now with a steal. Vogel got a hand on it, Hovass rebounds. They've got to get Hovass involved in the offense somehow. He's only one of three and had a three-pointer. Hovass trying to get himself involved. Duckett with his second block this half. And now Dedica has the basketball. And a great save to Anthony Duckett by Dedica. Well, these kids for both teams are just landing on the line. And that's what college basketball is about this time of the year. Just going after it, laying it all out there on the floor. And those guys down there are doing a great job of that. Long way to go here. 18.08 left in this contest. Duckett for the lead. Hovass got a hand on the ball and blocked it. It's a jump ball. The possession belongs to Penn State. Now the Whitley Lions with another chance to go in front. Boy, the Lions dodged the bullet there as Duckett was able to just come from the weak side to the strong side, which is a no-no. Fogel did not put a body on him and keep him from getting that good position, but Hovass helped out and forced the jump ball. Brown, Hovass, Eddie Barnes. Boy, Fogel really wasn't expecting that. If he'd have made a cut to the basket, a couple of steps, great look by Money Brown on the stat sheet. That's a T.O. for him. That was an excellent look. Fogel just didn't react as he should have. You know, Hovass in the semifinal game didn't score in the first half and had 16 in the second half. So he may come up with a, a big game yet tonight. He's got it before. Where the turnovers. Coach Park, he'll address that in the locker room. Tom Savage has 10 points now. 
He had to sit out the last 251 of the first half with three fouls. Rutgers back on top by a pair. Kick, the ball belongs to Penn State. And a new 45 second clock. Bob Wenzel, Bruce Parkhill. Two outstanding young coaches. Tony Brown. Ed Kogel squares up, shoots, and gets it. Ed Kogel now has eight points. Well, that's a nice little move by Kogel. He's not been getting it inside since midway through the first half. But what does he do? He steps out to about 12 feet. A little medium range jump shot. Penn State needs to try to penetrate that zone with the dribble. And then Money Brown and Freddie Barnes, as well as Tom Hovash, have to be ready to shoot the ball once it goes inside and comes back out. Savage outside to Dedica with 16-39 left in the game and a 42-42 tie. Tom Savage. Dedica trying to get by Blake. Greg Carter in the middle of it all puts up the jump shot and banks it in. What a move by Carter. He has 10. Well, he's a slicer, slicer and a slasher. He likes to shoot the ball on the move in traffic. And he's got that knack for getting it down. He's having a night. He's at five out of six shots tonight. Has 10 points. Eddie <laughs> Barnes, Money Brown from long range of three. See, Fred, I think that shot's going to be there whenever they want to take it. And Money Brown and Freddie Barnes are going to have to take it. Again, Rutgers doing a great job in that half-court zone defense, but they're really concentrating on taking the inside action away from Penn State. That perimeter shot will be there. Money Brown has eight points. Penn State by one. Savage for three from the deep corner. Rebounded by Penn State. Hovass, nice block out of Emory Ward. And Freddie Barnes is fouled. I think that one kind of got him in the eyes. Ward took a swipe at the ball and commits his second foul of the night. Not a smart foul, foul by Emory Ward. Freddie Barnes has full control of the basketball. He's in the backcourt. He's not going to hurt you back there. Just a bad foul that time by Ward. Here you get a look at that foul. There he is getting smacked right in the right eye. 15-40 left in this game. We'll be right back. This engineer will spend the next 12 hours hurtling through the darkness in an Acura Legend sedan. He's not testing the engine or the suspension. He's testing the interior, making sure that every control is where you need it when you need it. Chances are you'll never tune the radio at 125 miles per hour, but imagine how easy it'll seem at 55. What dry was? What dry? taste and you'll drink it dry. All across America, from her cities to her farms, dependable rude air conditioning keeps America cool. Air conditioning with a proven record for high efficiency. Nothing beats a rude. There's a close one underway in the whack between Hawaii and BYU. We'll try and get you out there, at least update you with the final score in just a moment. But right now, let us go back to the Atlantic 10 Championship, a very close one between Rutgers and Penn State. We are back with 15.40 left in this basketball game. Penn State up by one with a basketball now. Freddie Barnes of the Monroe Brown. I'm not surprised by the tightness of this one. Both of these teams... Similar records, they've played extremely well over the last portion of their season. Rutgers has won seven straight. Penn State, 10 of their last 13. They've got a good one. Well, that's 18 on the shot clock. They dump it inside the Fogel, working hard for the shot. It's knocked loose, trying to get it out of there, and now he's fouled by Craig Carter. 15.08 left in this one. Let's go back to John Saunders. Thanks a lot, gentlemen. Rutgers and Penn State fighting the way into the tournament, and the Wax is trying to get to the semifinal. Hawaii and BYU under a minute left. Let's go to Salt Lake City. 
Jordan. I want to welcome everybody around the country on ESPN to Prime Sports Network. BYU down by three to Hawaii with 24 seconds left. And the inbound to Marty Hawes. Drew Goodman along with Irv Brown. Hawes gets it to Toulson. Toulson to the man they want with it. Michael Smith spins. Does it get the roll? Reggie Cross with the rebound. 11 seconds to go, and Cross knocked out of bounds. And Smith is hot, arguing with Bobby Dibler. Cross is off the deck. He needs one of two here. Here it is. They couldn't get the three-pointer to two with Toulson. Smith goes up. Nothing doing. Cross, who was a man on the boards, gets hit right there. They wanted a two-shot foul, intentional. For those folks just joining us, Reggie Cross, who will certainly be first-team all-whack, one of the best players in the Western Athletic Conference. As we see Mark Heslop come back in, he's a three-point shooter. Cross has played very limited tonight because he's been in foul trouble throughout. Yet since his return with about four minutes to go, he has about five or six rebounds. And here he is at the line, a chance to make the separation four or more. We still have a ball game. They got to pull up and shoot it. They got plenty of time. Santiago can there it fire is. from three. Smith way outside, short. We got an upset. Hawaii has beaten the BYU Cougars 72 to 69. Just 45 minutes from their home in Provo. The Rainbows of Hawaii advance to play the winner of Colorado State and Utah. Right now, though, back to the Atlantic 10. Penn State and Rutgers, who will get that berth in the NCAA tournament? Savage trying to get Rutgers back in front. The shot falls. Count. Was that the fourth foul on Tom Hovass? That it is. Horvath, who just committed the third foul, now whistled for the fourth with 13.49 left in this game. And that Boy, is a big call. Nice dump in pass by Anthony Duncan. Look at that nice pass after the penetration inside. And Savage, get in there, get in there. Hung on the rim and finally dropped. Horvath, foul number four. He's having words with somebody. Brian now now replaces Hovass. He goes to the bench with 13.49 left in this game. He committed two quick fouls. 46-45 Rutgers. Savage now has 13 points. Rutgers leads by two. Bruce Blake. Five. The shot doesn't fall on the foul that time on Miles Dixon. His second. Here they go, Brian Allen just over the top to Bruce Blake, immediately creates a two-on-one. Rutgers gets back so well, but Blake decides to take it himself. Not a bad play that time by Bruce Blake. Blake, a 6'6 senior, 75% free throw shooter. Look at the crowd behind him. That's what he's staring into. And he hits the free throw. Now he could tie the game with 13.46 left. Look at the numbers on him, 58% field goal shooting. Lee Perry rebounds, Rutgers up by one. Penn State's been all man to man. Dixon, that's a foul. Money Brown on the reach. Right on the arm, first foul on the no Brown. I really think Money Brown and Freddie Barnes have the quickness to stay in front of people but sometimes they just aren't quite ready to move their feet laterally here we get the tail end of the penetration but clearly miles dixon has beaten money brown badly and there was just a graze touch foul on the shot james barnes in the lineup now for penn state replacing money brown so now penn state going back to three big men they were with the three guard lineup and hovass came out of the game brian allen replaced him Freddie Barnes at the guards. Miles Dixon, free throw, won't drop. Well, in their last game, Dixon only played nine minutes in the win against Temple, did not contribute, had a bunch of zeros in the stat column, but here tonight, he's been a factor. Miles Dixon has seven points. A 6'2 senior from Jersey City, played with David Rivers and Kenny Wolfman in high school there at St. Anthony High School. One of the best high schools in the country, ranked number one in USA Today's high school poll. Allen. 
try to get Fogel knocked out of there by Jeffett. And again, that inside defense of Rutgers forces the turnover. Savage, cut, jump shot, and he got it. <laughs> well, you don't know how tough that shot is in traffic. Four-point lead, Rutgers their biggest lead of the night. And listen to this crowd. 13 minutes to play. Right, Ryan Allen, Freddie Barnes. See, Freddie Barnes has to put the ball on the floor and penetrate. He's not making that guy move at all the head of the zone defense. And that's Rick Daddick. He's got to make him move, make him play somebody. There's Barnes, shot off the rim. Rebound Lee Perry, knocked loose by Blake. But saved by Anthony Duckett. And here comes Rutgers, up by four. Miles Dixon flashes it in the lane, and the jump shot is no good. Rebound to Ed Fogel for Penn State. Boy, Penn State hasn't figured out a way to stop Miles Dixon from penetrating any time he wants to. That time he just missed what was a very good shot opportunity. Penn State now, Fred, has to attack this zone defense better. They've got to try to make Danica work, move the defense either with the pass or dribble penetration. Great shot, no. 12 0 7 left in the basketball game. Rutgers with a four point lead in the ball. Bob Wenzel shouting instructions to his club as they bring the ball up court, and Miles Dixon is walking it. Penn State has hit just three out of nine shots in the second half. They haven't had very good shots. That one by Bruce Blake, certainly out of his range. He works inside. 12 feet in is where he operates best. Miles Dixon. Get up in the corner to Lee Perry. Back to Dixon. There's the penetration and the shot. Rolls off the rim. Dixon chases the rebound down. Back to the lane he goes. And the pass stolen by James Barnes. That's a Freddie Barnes. Penn State now four. Late. Now they get it inside to Fogel, and he can't stick the turnaround jumper. Rebound, Anthony Duckett. To Miles Dixon. Lee Perry moves against Lee Barnes. Seven points, Lee Perry. And a six-point lead to Rutgers, their biggest lead of the night. Still 11.07 to play, and Penn State wants to talk about it. Look at this crowd. Some of the most beautiful shapes known to man were formed by the wind. The Acura Legend Coupe is no exception. You're looking sharp, you're looking good, you've come so far, and we know how to make the most of who you are, father to son, it's what we've always done, Gillette. The, the Gillette Atra Plus system get. with the Luber Smooth Strip is the best a man can get. The best a man seems more exciting with Pizza Hut Pizza. With tons of toppings and two layers of cheese, it's a real crowd pleaser. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! On the right of your picture of Unink 10 Conference Commissioner Ron Bertovich, the man in the middle in the glasses, Lou Bonder, the supervisor of officials on the left, John Wooding, the assistant commissioner. For the crowd is absolutely something. They are cranked up. For Miles Dixon. He has played big off the bench for this team. He's really been outstanding in his effort. He's been able to exploit the Penn State man-to-man -man defense. We just saw Commissioner Bertovich and John Wooding, Rich McKeon, Rob, Drew, Cindy, all the people in, this, in their office have done an outstanding job all year long. Well, they have. This has been an, an excellent tournament. Penn State has to find a way. Bruce Park will call the timeout. And let's see if they can get something going now. James Barnes fighting for position low, and Bruce Blake takes it inside and scores. Nine for Bruce Blake, and a four-point lead to Rutgers. Well, you love to, as Colt 
as a coach, you would love to see that happen every time you call a timeout. When you needed a hoop, you set something up and your players go out there and get it. Look at the fast break point. A direct result of the turnovers, I think, Rutgers has been able to kick it loose from Penn State and get those easy transition opportunities. 21-5 on fast break point, favor of Rutgers. Rutgers got down by 13 early in this game. They came back to take the lead at halftime, and they're up by four now with 10-12 left in the game. Ruckett lost the ball, picked off by James Barnes, and here comes Penn State now with a chance to win the lead a bit more. A nice play by James Barnes to get back and pluck it out of there cleanly. There's Parkhill with his offense in front of him calling a play. Freddie Barnes sets up the offense against the Rutgers zone, which has been a very effective defense tonight. Well, I don't want to take anything away from Rutgers defense, but I think Penn State can tackle it a little better with some penetration from their people on the perimeter. Freddie Barnes is close from the corner. That's a big bucket. It's a two. <laughs> Bruce Blake is at two baskets in a row. He well, has a moment. Bruce, I talked about he just shot one from the other side of the basket about that same distance, and I said his range is only 12 to 14 feet. Well, maybe he heard me and wanted to prove me wrong. Look at Dadica from way downtown. It misses. Great save by Duckett. The Savage. Off balance shot. No. And a blocking foul on Brian Allen of Penn State. His third personal foul. Make Anthony Duckett the hero of that play. No question about it. Him able to get to the basketball and save it. They've really done a nice job staying even with Penn State on the backboard. Here's the blocking foul on Brian Allen. Boy, he was really close to being there in time. 9-14 left in this game. Tom Savage on the line. Excellent free thrower. Three for three tonight. Ed Fogel now is going to catch a little breather. C.J. Johnson is in to replace him. Savage, three for three tonight. 78% shooter on the year. Rutgers up by two. Now 16 points for Tom Savage, the 6'5 sophomore. Well, he's got the game face, doesn't he? Mm. I can't imagine him. I can't imagine him smiling out on the floor. <laughs> he had 34 points the first two games in this tournament. 30 in two games against Penn State this year. Rutgers backed up by four. 906 left in the game. James Barnes. Brian Allen, quick jumper, top of the circle, missed. That's Bruce Blake underneath to stick it right back in. And Bruce Blake coming up big in the second half now for Penn State. Well, he claimed he came clear from about 16 feet on the wing, untouched. That's one of the weaknesses of the zone defense. No individual blockout responsibility. He has nine of the 14 second half points for Penn State. Barnes to Blake to make it 11 and 16. And now Penn State back to the 54-54 tie. Well, I told the coaching staff of Penn State when I talked to him, I don't know how Bruce Blake does it, but more times than not, he's the lead guy on the wing, on the break. Rutgers calls timeout with 8.24 to play and nothing having been decided. Thinking of getting engaged? Don't buy that diamond before you shop Jewelry by Exquisite. We guarantee that nobody beats our prices on diamonds because we buy direct from European sources and deliver savings to you. We'll teach you the finer points of diamond buying. And with on-the-spot financing, you can have your diamond today. Visit Jewelry by Exquisite for all your jewelry needs. From diamonds to fine 14 karat gold. Jewelry by Exquisite on the corner of Washington Avenue and Route 28 in Dunellen. Thinking of buying a diamond? Think Jewelry by Exquisite. It's easy to see where your car can end up after an auto accident, but what happens to you? It's time for a consultation with Jack Frost. With Jack Frost, you'll find the damages don't just pertain to the automobile. Are you suffering at the hands of auto negligence? Find out if you can bring suit for pain and suffering, permanent disability, loss of work, medical expenses, and insurance coverage. Call Jack Frost today at 753-0880 and seek out your rights. Invited will be delighted, while the rest may be depressed. But all will be interested as John Saunders and Dick Vital host the NCAA Selection Special, Sunday night on ESPN. 
For some, it's a last chance. For others, it's only the first step. The quest for conference titles begins in the ACC and Pac-10 quarterfinals tomorrow at noon Eastern, live on ESPN. A number of Penn State fans made the trip down here, and they are now celebrating as Penn State has fought back to tie this thing. They fought back because of Bruce Blake. He got 11 of their 16 second half points. Here's the mitt by Allen. Untouched from the right wing. There's Mr. Blake. Hello, how do you do? And all those nifty little moves inside really scored. Blake tonight with 15 points, 11 of them here in the second half. He's had seven out of nine field goal attempts. Hit his last four shots. And again, has 11 of the 16 points Penn State has scored in the second half. He's doing this with Hovass on the bench with four fouls. Duckett, double team, takes the shot anyway. Hits it in his foul. Count the basket. Third shot, Anthony Duckett. He'll go to the line. Oh, we got ourselves one heck of a basketball game here tonight, Fred. He's double teamed. Now he just spins away from the double team. Little fade away from about six feet. Nice touch, and he got the bump and has a chance for a three-point. You know, C.J. Johnson was standing there with his hands up with good position and moved right at the last minute. Duckett hits the free throw, makes a three-point play. <laughs> Rector's up three. Ed Fogel back in the lineup now. C.J. Johnson goes to the bench for Penn State. Tom Hovass sat down with his fourth foul at the 13.49 mark. He's been on the bench for five and a half minutes. Maybe a while before he gets back in. 8.06 left in the game. Bruce Blake at the top of the circle. And low pound. Bobo squares up. Ooh, tough shooting left for Penn State that time. It was in and came back out. Well, Shot really a nice move to get the ball inside. Savage to the baseline, lost it. Out of bounds, it'll be Penn State basketball. Rutgers by three with 7.48 to play. Penn State is led by as many as 13. Rutgers by as many as six. Boy, Bruce Blake has the hot hand. I think Penn State will figure out a way to try to get it in his hand. Let him do some work, continue to do work. Freddie Barnes missed the shot. Danica has the rebound for Rutgers. Tom Hovass is going to come back in now for Penn State with 7.27 to play. Bruce Parkfield has decided to get him in the ball game and take the chance. Savage. Off down, shot misses, rebound, Bruce Blake. Freddie Barnes up court for the Nittany Lions with 7-11 left in the game. Double hit it. No, there's a kick. Call it a kick. It's still Penn State basketball. And here comes Tom Hovass back. I thought Barnes had made a mistake that he did not make. That ball was kicked. Well, it did look like he had turned the ball over. But the official saw something else. Hovass needs to look to shoot it from the perimeter when he's got a good shot in his range. Hasn't really been a factor offensively. He's just one for four tonight. Boy, again, they slap the ball away as it comes into Fogel. Now Money Brown runs it down, gives it back to Freddie Barnes. How many times tonight has Rutgers slapped that pass away in there? Well, that pass has been telegraphed a number of times, but also Rutgers has done a good job in terms of being active with their hands. Monroe Brown can't quite get it down, but ball is out of bounds. It is Penn State basketball with 6.36 to play. The Nittany Lions down by three. Hovass with only three points in this game will handle the inbounds pass. He's one for four tonight. Barnes to Brown. You're right there. Barnes has to try to put it on the... Brown has to try to put it on the floor and make people play. Hovass. Henry Ward got out quickly to cover him. Hovass and again Ward comes out. Barnes to Monroe Brown to Bruce Blake in heavy traffic. He's got it. Did they count it? No. It's a foul on Bruce Blake. His third personal foul, and the basket doesn't count, and that is big. Here we get a look at it. I want to see this one. He catches it in traffic. Yeah, there's the bump. There it is, the lowering of the shoulder. It's a good call. Good call that time. You're right. You're exactly right, Fred. 6.09 left in the game. Rutgers with a three-point lead in the basketball. Datica gives it up for Craig Carter. Duckett. Anthony Duckett with a stick back. He has 10. Rutgers by five. 5.55 left to play. Well, guys, something. guys in the truck doing a nice job on that last replay. 
Boy, that time Duncan just found the ball after that air ball by Carter. Air balls usually throw people off in terms of rebounding. You expect them to hit the rim and you can catch the defense a little flat-footed sometimes. Good ball of Lorenzo Charles two years ago. <laughs> well, usually the offensive player has a bead more so on the ball in that situation than the defensive player. Whole fast sticks a three. His second basket of the night, he has six points, and now it's a two-point lead for Rutgers with 5.15 to play. Penn State's showing us some zone now. Obviously, with Hovath at the four fouls, and we'll try to keep him from getting the fifth. Good move here by Coach Parkhill. Five minutes to play. Rutgers with a two-point lead in the basketball, and that has been an excellent basketball game here tonight for the Atlantic 10 Conference Championship. I think it's pretty clear that only the winner of this game will go to the NCAA championship. The winner of the team quite likely would wind up in the NIT. So it is big. That is big. Craig Carter, his 12th point. Tough shot off the baseline. I really think the tougher the shot, the more he likes it. He loves to go in there on penetration, slashing and slicing in traffic. And somehow, he gets the shot off. Left first by four, 423 to play. And Will Brown, Tom Hobass, Eddie Barnes, Bruce Blake. Whistle blowing this great with the baseline. Anthony Duckett got a little bit of upset. He's all right. The official very quickly get in there to make sure that he doesn't get too upset. The foul was called against Tom Savage. That's his fourth foul. It comes with 4.15 left in the game, so he'll have to be careful down the stretch now. And he's going to sit down off. now and get a breather. Lee Perry checks in. Here we get a look at it. Right portion of your screen. There he is with the bump with the leg. 16 foul, or no, 13 foul uh -huh. records. Boy, smart play by Hovath. All receivers were denied. He just bounced it off the pin, off a Rutgers defender. Penn State's committed six fouls. Rutgers just three in the second half. Hovass is fouled as he takes the shot. He'll go to the line with 4-10 left in the game. Let us finish our housekeeping chores. The arrow belongs to Penn State if there's a hell ball. Emory Ward's fourth foul. Comes with 4-10 left in the game. Tom Hovass to the line, a 77% shooter. Penn State down four. Well, he is looking into a sea of waving red arms, pom poms. And gets the second. Seven points, Hovass. Three-point lead, Rutgers. 4-10 left in the game. Obviously, you know those people are there when you're shooting right into them, but you really need to concentrate, and most players are able to just to concentrate on the hole. You see much but the rim, do they? That's right. Lee Perry misses, and Blake rebounds, and here comes Penn State down three. Freddie Barnes now pushing it a little quicker. And Hovass back to Barnes. And he Brown. Well, look at Blake sitting down in that post. He really wants it. Barnes steps in. The corner Hobass three for the tie. Got it. That is a great play by Freddie Barnes. He had a shot. Really focused in, put the isolated cam on Hobass, wanted to get it into the hands of their best three-point shooter, and he buried it. Bob Wenzel and Rutgers call timeout as the Penn State fans celebrate the tie with 323 left in this game. It's beautiful. Is it fast? Very quick. As a matter of fact, the guy didn't know what to think. When Mulholland does four curves, while others describe luxury car performance with words like terminal velocity and lateral g-force, like it's on rails. Owners of the Acura Legend Coupe tend to be a little less technical. It's a blast. 
Play the 7 Up final match game. All the excitement of college basketball. Every five seconds, someone's bottle cap can instantly score free 7 Up for the chance to win $10,000 if they match that final championship winning score. Hurry and take your shot. Say, where'd you learn to dunk? In finishing school? Oh, now don't you start telling me I shouldn't dunk. Of course you shouldn't. You don't know how to do it. Dunking's an art. <laughs> Tommy. I'll write a book about it. <laughs> Thanks, Professor. Do you know why Spuds McKenzie has so much fun at parties? Because he's always in control. Spuds knows it's cool to live by one simple rule. Know when to say when. A reminder from Anheuser-Busch. Hello once again, everybody. I'm Chris Berman. Join us on the Sports Center after the game. The latest in college basketball, a close-up look at the San Diego Padres, the classic NHL game between Le Canadien et Le Nordique. Sports Center after the game. We will have fun. We guarantee it. There's the whole story. 3.23 left to play. Hovass three-point goal just tied the game at 61. And Rutgers called the timeout. You young players want to shoot three-pointers? Well, how about moving without the ball? There you see Hovass from one end of the baseline completely to the other to get an open shot and then square up beautifully and drill it. Nice pass, too, by Freddie Barn. Savage back in the game now for Rutgers. He has four fouls. Hovass is playing with four. Dadica from way outside of three. I mean, from way above the three-point line. It's a three-point lead to Rutgers at 3.07 to play. You know what happens, I think, in that situation? You don't think Dadek is going to shoot it from that deep, Fred. When you're out there on the floor, I mean, he's three, four feet behind the arc, and you really don't feel like he's going to shoot it from there. There's Blake, turn around, jumper, no. And a foul on Ed Porter. Rutgers has a three-point lead, and they're going to shoot a free throw here. There's Parkhill. The Penn State coach obviously doesn't like the call. <laughs> Ken Lomas, one of his assistants behind him there. Here's Blake getting the shot he wants. A little hard off the back iron, off the heel of the rim. Oh, I don't know where that one was. I mean, my goodness, it's in the paint, going after the orange. Let him bump and thump a little bit. Miles Dixon free throw put Rutgers up by four with exactly it's Miles Dixon. Oh, here's a Carter, isn't it? It's Carter yeah, that's Greg line. Carter. That hairstyle and you mistook, <laughs> you mistook him for someone else. Greg Carter <laughs> off the line with his 13th point. That was from the side. Oh, well, I don't care what angle. <laughs> All right, I can't get out of it. Rutgers by four. Greg Carter makes it Rutgers by five with his 14th point. 2.53 to play. Penn State needs to rally again and listen to the crowd here at record. Somebody is going to get the automatic bid to the NCAA here tonight, and the Rutgers fans hungry for it. Hovass drops it inside the plate. Great work by Penn State inside. Boy, it came down. He did something. I don't know what it is. He's asking for a timeout. Blake is hurt and down on the floor. He may have gotten elbowed in the face after the shot. Well, what poised, though, by the Mitty Lions. And Blake, obviously, in pain. He was knocked down. Here we get a look. Right there in the bottom of your screen. There's the shot. Oh, and he turned and hit his face right on the shoulder of Henry Ward. He was knocked unconscious in the game in Philadelphia a couple of nights ago, and he's all right. I talked to him before the game, and he waved the trainer off there. He wants to stay in the game. Now, Brian Allen is in the game, replacing Freddie Barnes for Penn State. It's a three-point lead to Rutgers with 2.27 to play. Well, maybe that's one of those bumps that makes you dizzy and stings quite a bit immediately, but one of those things you can shake off, especially in the heat of a battle like this. 19 left in the game, 30 on the shot clock for Rutgers. Dadica picks up the dribble, gets Emory Ward up high, right back to Dadica. 66-63, Rutgers. Dadica 
Going for three. Woo! Rick Danica has hit two threes in a row, and Rutgers up six with two minutes to play. Danica <laughs> has nailed them from long range. Boy, timing is everything. And you can't hit three pointers at a better time than when he's hit them. He's got a license to shoot that shot, Clark, and it may have turned into a license to kill for Rutgers here tonight with 153 to play. Rutgers by six. To get great looking hair, you don't need separate shampoo and conditioner. Get it together. In just one step, get your hair clean, more manageable. There's one that does the work of you. For control you can't get from shampoo alone. Watch and go. Shampoo plus conditioner in one. Part plus. When you race Formula One cars at speeds exceeding 200 miles an hour, you're bound to gain a great deal of valuable information about engine technology. You might expect us to keep information like that under lock and key. But we prefer to keep it someplace a little more accessible. The Acura Integra Sports Sedan. Want to talk range? Rick Dattica has it. Here we're going to look at him. This is the second of two consecutive three-pointers. Allen's going to stumble, really playing to cut him off on penetration. Gives him much too much room in daylight. And up until then, Fred, Rutgers only two of ten for three-point range. Now Dattica comes down the last two times and buries him from deep. Let's see if Penn State has an answer. They're down by six, one to 48. Welcome to basketball game. Penn State with a couple of timeouts, but you don't need that. Turnover. And well ground travel, one reward celebrates. Rutgers gets it back, 145 to play, and the Scarlet Knights up six. Craig Carter in backcourt. Anthony Tucker. Tipped away by Freddie Barnes. He moves on Duckett. Count the basket and a foul. Oh, what a turnaround. Freddie Barnes with great anticipation and strength to finish it off in the open court. Duckett hustling back. Picks up the foul. Here it is. Look at Barnes. That anticipation. Beautiful steal. And now he knows he's going to get challenged. Takes it to the hoop. As a matter of fact, Duckett may have blocked that into the hole. Yeah, he might have. Duckett not happy with it. Obviously. What a ball game. Back and forth. You're on the seesaw. Four-point lead Rutgers and Freddie Barnes on the line. Four for four tonight. And now it's a three-point ball game with 1.30 to play. Boy, how that changes things dramatically. From a six-point cushion with the ball, Rutgers the turnover and the three-point hoop, and now it's a different game. Rutgers still needs to come up with a good position here and get two more or three more. Savage, Gattaca, Barnes guarding Gattaca. Ovas helping him near the baseline. Near steal by Monroe Brown. Took it away from Emory Ward, but he couldn't hold it. It's out of bounds to Rutgers. 109 left in the game. 25 on the shot clock for the Scarlet Knights. Gattaca. Emory Ward in the lane. Shot misses. Rebound Penn State. Brian Allen got it. 55 seconds to play. The Nittany Lions down three. Ovas looks at his coach, Freddie Barnes, 44 seconds to play. Penn State needs three for the tie. Danica chasing Hovas. Well, they're almost going to have to shoot a three now because they're using a lot of time. Hovas fouled by Rick Danica, the second on Danica. The foul comes with 34 seconds to play, but Penn State down by three. There's Bob Wenzel. Danica was chasing Hovass all over the court that time, trying to prevent the three. That was the 16 foul on Rutgers. Ed Fogel now is going to come back into the Penn State lineup. From here on out, both teams are in the 1-1. One -one. Well, you almost think that Penn State has to look for the three unless they're just going to try to get a quick two inside. And the guy 
guy who will probably shoot the three most likely would be Hobart. Buddy Barnes, three-point range there, doesn't take it. And Earl Brown, 25 seconds left in the game. And a near turnover saved by Blake. Shot clock is off. Timeout taken by Penn State with 17 seconds to play. Well, we are down to it, Mark Kellogg. <laughs> oh, what a great way to finish up this Atlantic 10 season with this kind of game for the conference championship with the NCAA bid on the line for two teams that nobody really expected to be in this position to start with. To go back to what you talked about at the beginning of the game, people around the country may be saying, what are they doing there? Well, they earned the right to get here. Rutgers has won seven in a row. The last time they lost was at Penn State. Penn State has played so well down the stretch. The last time Penn State went to the NCAA tournament was back in 1965. They've been there five times. Rutgers has been there four times. The last time in 83. There's the Penn State bench. This is the Rutgers huddle. One's a pop. Think he's got their attention? <laughs> well, you know they're going to defend Hovass tough. Yeah. Three-point shooters for Penn State. Hovass tonight, three for four. Brown, one for two. Barnes, two for four. Allen, two for four. Allen is not in the game right now. See, the key about this, they've got four guys out there that can shoot it. And it might come down to one of the unlikely guys, maybe Barnes or Brown, being willing to take the big shot. Hovass from long range, in and out. Rebound, front four. Rutgers has it, five seconds to play. Savage in backcourt. A foul was called with two seconds to play. The fans are coming on the court. There is still time left on the clock. They're going to have to get the fans off the court. This game isn't over. And they immediately do get them off. Oh, look at Merce Shapiro down there working. <laughs> he didn't bargain for this, I know. No. <laughs> He's tough enough just to blow that whistle. And then you got to do some crowd control action, too. And everything seems to be back to normal. It's going to be battling if they hold on and win this one. There are two seconds left in the game. Bob Runzel getting everybody back off the line. Tom Savage will shoot one and one. He is five for five at the line tonight. Has 17 points, and he could ice it right here. Barring a miracle for Penn State, Rutgers is going to the NCAA. Bruce Parkhill wants to call a timeout to see what he can figure out for his club. Stroud's going to tell you everything. Bob Winslow, his team up by four with two seconds play, trying to get a photographer out of his huddle so he can talk to his team. <laughs> well, they're ready to celebrate, and rightly so. Well, this is the kind of game, Fred, when I really think neither team deserves to lose. I mean, it's been that kind of year for both of these clubs, and although it looks like Rutgers certainly is going to come out and win this one and get to the big party, what a great way for Wendell, Wendell first season. Rutgers was 7 and 22 last year. Seven and 22 last year, and they are going to the NCAA. Is that the turn? <laughs> That's a major turn. That's a big league turnaround. Bob Wenzel coming back to his alma mater. First year as head coach. Is there, a, is, there a, is there a nicer story in college basketball than what's happened here, Fred? Don't know what it could be. is over, just watch the Rutgers bench in the crowd. Hobo throws at the length of the court. Rutgers goes to the NCAA. Look at the mob scene on the court. Look at the joy in the Lewis Brown Athletic Center at Rutgers from 7 and 22 last year to the NCAA. Take you back to John Summers.
<laughs> Thanks a lot, gentlemen. Celebration time in Piscataway, New Jersey. You can see it going on as Rutgers is headed to the field of 64. They become the 16th team getting in there, beating Penn State 70 to 66. Now, coming up after Sports Center, which is next with Chris Berman and Charlie Steiner, we will move to women's basketball action from the Pac-10. It will be Stanford against USC. Stanford ranked fourth in the nation. Then tomorrow we'll have six games. First from the ACC, Maryland and NC State at noon. Georgia Tech and North Carolina at two. Wake Forest and Duke at 7, and Clemson and West Virginia, or rather Virginia, at 9 o'clock from the Omni in Atlanta. Then the Pac-10, 4 o'clock, Cal and Oregon State, and Washington and UCLA, that at midnight. Tim Brando and I will be here to take you through the day's action. 48 more teams are fighting their way into the tournament. 16 are already there, looking for that one good moment.